Hello everybody, my name is Iman and SID. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna go ahead and start chapter 21. Now, in this chapter, we're gonna have an in-depth introduction into alpha carbon chemistry. With this understanding of enols and enolates, we will then explore alpha halogenation, aldol reactions, and clasing condensation. Now, with carbonyls being reactive sites, as we have seen before, there's a convention where we assign letters to carbons based on how far away they are from the electrophilic carbon in the carbonyl. So notice here is our electrophilic carbon in our carbonyl. One carbon away would get the assignment alpha, two carbons away would get the assignment beta, so on and so forth. Now, the alpha position is important because we will see the chemistry that happens or is possible at this location, either using acids or bases in this chapter. Now, in the presence of catalytic acid or base, and by the way, we say catalytic because you reform or preserve it throughout the mechanism, a ketone will exist in equilibrium with an enol. Now, when treated with a strong base, the alpha position of the ketone is deprotonated to give a resonance stabilized intermediate called the enolate. The ketone and enol, as well as the ketone and enolate, are tautomers. Now, tautomers are not, and I cannot stress this enough, they are not resonance structures, so do not confuse the two. Tautomers are rapidly interconverting constitutional isomers they differ from each other in the placement of a hydrogen or a proton and the position of course of the double bond tautomers are a consequence of a ketone reacting with a acid or a base that results in this and it's in essence a simple intramolecular proton transfer something to keep in mind Another thing not to confuse this with is carbocation rearrangement, which also involves a proton transfer. But remember, we do not deal with, with double bonds when we are, when we are talking about uh, carbocation rearrangement. Now, a question you might have is, well, where does the equilibrium lie with ketones and enols and ketones and enolates? Well, the answer to that is, well, it depends. It depends on the acid base used, it depends on the solvent, and it depends on the structure of the product in comparison to the reactant. Now, again, for enol formation, you can do this with acid or base. The mechanism involves the same two steps. The difference is in the order, depending on acid or base. In acidic conditions, the first step is protonation of the carbonyl group, and this gives this positively charged intermediate. All right, The acid catalyzed process results in this intermediate that is a resonance stabilized cation. All right. In basic conditions, the first step is deprotonation of the alpha position, and this gives a negatively charged intermediate. The consequence of the first step of a base catalyzed reaction is going to be this intermediate that is a resonance stabilized anion. You're going to see this commonly, and it's important to remember, especially when you're drawing mechanisms for this. In, in practice problems, if you're using an acid, remember that what you are checking to make sure you're doing it correctly is that your intermediate is going to be a resonance stabilized cation for acid and a resonance stabilized anion for base. All right, one more time, let's look at this acid catalyzed reaction. In the first step, the carbonyl is protonated to form this resonance stabilized cation, which is then deprotonated at the alpha position to give the enol. All right, notice that none of the reagents or intermediates used here are strong bases, right? And this is consistent with the fact that we're doing this under what? Under acidic conditions. All right, awesome. Now, for base catalyzed, all right, your first step is that the alpha position is deprotonated to form this resonance stabilized anion, right? It has this negative charge, okay? Now, this is then protonated to give the enol. Notice again, none of the reagents here 
our strong acids in order to be consistent with the fact that we're doing this under basic conditions. All right. Now, for enolates, enolates are ambident nucleophiles because they actually possess two nucleophilic sites. All right, each of which can attack an electrophile. Now, when the oxygen atom attacks an electrophile, it's called an O attack. When the alpha carbon um, attacks, this is called, you'll never guess, a C attack. Now, although the oxygen atom of the enolate bears the majority of the negative charge, your C attack is still going to be more common than your O attack. Now, all the reactions presented in this chapter will predominantly be examples of C attack. Awesome. Now, enolates are more useful than enols for two really big reasons. One, enolates possess a full negative charge, so they're more reactive than enols. And two, enolates can be isolated and stored, unlike enols, which cannot. And for these two reasons, the vast majority of the reactions in this chapter are going to proceed via an enolate intermediate. All right, fantastic. So with that being said, let's do a few practice problems. This practice problem tells us to draw both resonance structures of the enolate formed, all right, so we're dealing with an enolate formation, when the ketone is treated with a strong base, all right? So this is a base catalyzed reaction, and we want to draw the resonance structure, all right, of the enolate formed. So for this ketone, when it's treated with a strong base, the first step is going to be deprotonation of the alpha position. All right, that's the first step for your base catalyzed reactions. So that means when that alpha position is deprotonated, that hydrogen, when it's taken away, is going to leave its electrons behind, and that's going to cause a negative charge at that alpha position. And we can draw the resonance structure of this, right, to get our resonance stabilized anion because again this is under base conditions basic conditions what we can do here is we can dump the electrons here to form a double bond but if we make a bond we have to break a bond right and then we get a structure that looks like this and this is this is both resonance structures of the enolate that's formed when each of the following ketones is when this particular ketone a is treated with a strong base let's do the same thing for b all right now b has one alpha position here um for a remember both of these alpha positions are equivalent because it's symmetrical so you could have done either or doesn't matter now for b we only have one alpha position there are no hydrogens here all right that alpha position is going to get deprotonated and when it does, it's going to leave its electrons behind. So we have a negative charge there. All right, fantastic. This negative charge can dump its electrons here to form a double bond. But if you make a bond, you break a bond. All right. And so you get a resonance structure that is going to look like this. All right, fantastic. I'm going to let you do C and D and let me know what you get in the comments below all right or if you have trouble and you want me to help more than happy to shoot me an email all right fantastic so we said for enolate formation we need a base <clears throat> excuse me but how do we know what how do we know how to decide what base is appropriate appropriate well the determining factor for this is really comparing pka values for the starting ketone and the conjugate acid now, just to cut to the chase, a base that is commonly used for ir irreversible enolate formation is LDA. And LDA stands for lithium diisopropyl amide. All right. So if you have a ketone or aldehyde and you want to make sure that you are definitely forming enolates, right? You, you want irreversible enolate formation. You want to use a base that's going to result in enolate formation and not a base that's going to result in partial enolate formation and you also have some of the starting material which is why you want to use things like lda or sodium hydrate hydride okay if you use something like an alcohol like um an alcohol like sodium hydroxide or sodium um ethoxide these are not going to result in irreversible enolate formation actually what you're going to get is that both the enolate 
and the ketone your starting material are present at equilibrium this might not be beneficial whenever you're trying to of course result in a final product that is at high yields right so this is important to know now something else to consider is if you have a uh, an anhydride right where you have two carbonyls that are beta to each other what this is going to result in is a doubly stabilized enolate and that means that you don't actually have to use something as strong as lda here right because you have these two carbonyls that results in this stability and and this doubly stabilized enolate formation so you can actually in the case of anhydrides all right you can actually use sodium uh, uh, hydroxide or sodium ethoxide, something like that instead of LDA. But that's only in the case of anhydride. All right. Fantastic. All right. So let's do this example one more time. Let's try to draw. All right. Treating this with a base, what we get in terms of the resonance st uh, structures. Okay. So all of these, right, this has X and Y um, um, symmetry. So all these alpha positions are equivalent. All right, first step in a base catalyzed reaction is deprotonation of the alpha position. All right, so that means the hydrogen leaves its electrons uh, uh, behind it. So we have this negative charge. All right, this negative charge can form a double bond here. You make a bond, you break a bond. All right, and you get a structure. Oh, you get a structure that looks like this. All right, fantastic. Now, with all that being said, now we want to move in and talk about alpha halogenation. And you can do alpha halogenation in acidic conditions or basic conditions, but we're gonna cover acidic conditions first. What are we doing here? Well, what we're doing is adding a halogen at the alpha position, all right? And there's two parts to the mechanism for adding a halogen to the alpha position under acidic conditions. The first part is tautomerization to get an enol. The second part is halogenation. The cool thing is that at the end of this mechanism, you form acid that can catalyze the first part of this reaction again, hence catalytic, hence acid catalyzed reaction. Now, when the ketone is symmetrical, halogenation is equivalent at either alpha positions because it's symmetrical. When it's not symmetrical, when you're when you have an unsymmetrical ketone, you're going to get a mixture of project uh, of products, and halogenation can occur at both alpha positions. But primarily, your major your major product for alpha halogenation with an unsymmetrical ketone will be at the more substituted side of the ketone. Now, another cool thing about having an, a halogen present, a, a cool thing about adding halogens to the alpha position is that you can kick them out via an elimination type reaction because halogens are great leaving groups all right so with all that information in mind let's jump into a few practice for, uh, problems for alpha halogenation in acidic conditions all right this first one says predict the major product for each of the following re transformations propose a mechanism we're going to go ahead and do a together we're going to draw out our starting ketone all right it's symmetrical so both alpha positions are equal we're just going to work with one first set of reagents here we have our ketone and our first set of reagents is a strong acid and a halogen so that means we're going to do alpha halogenation all right now this is under acidic conditions all right so when we're treating it with that acid first step of acid catalyzed reactions is protonation of the oxygen in the carbonyl all right so that means that now our oxygen has a hydrogen attached to it all right fantastic okay now this is our resonance stabilized intermediate we're dealing with an acid catalyzed reaction that means that we have to have a resonance stabilized cation here all right and that's exactly what we're gonna do all right fantastic let me fix this up all right and we can take a look back just to recall what that means for us all right that means when we protonate when the carbonyl group is protonated to form a resonance stabilized cation all right this is what that 
resonance stabilized intermediate is going to look like. That is what we want to draw here because this is also an acid catalyzed reaction. All right. So we have our positive charge here and then we're going to break our double bond. All right. Going to dump those electrons on the oxygen so that it cannot have a charge. That means that we have a positive charge here. Fantastic. Now what we're going to do is we're going to treat this with water and what water is going to do is going to take it's going to deprotonate that alpha position now. All right? And that's going to form a double that hydrogen's going to leave its electrons here to form a double bond between there. And guess what that's going to give us? What that's going to give us is our enol formation. All right? This is our enol right here. Fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. Now we can treat this with our halogen. We had Br2. All right. So what happens now is our double bond's going to take one of the bromines. All right. It's going to take one of the bromines. All righty. And it's going to form a double bond here. Oh, oops, no, actually, it's going to add the bromine here, and the double bond is formed over here. And we still have our hydrogen here, but now we've created this charge on the oxygen. All right, we want our final product for this alpha halogenation step to be a neutral final product. So water is going to come back again and take this hydrogen. All right, we're going to reform our acid this way, and what we get for our alpha halogenation product is this fantastic now we're not done yet all right we've drawn the the mechanism for alpha halogenation this was our first set of reagents that we're treating the ketone here but wait we have one more set of reagents we have this pyridine this pyridine is a base and what it's going to do is it's going to form a double bond it's going to form a double bond here. What it's going to do is it's going to abstract the hydrogen from here, right, through an elimination reaction. All right, our, our pyridine is going to come, take this hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to dump its electrons here to form a double bond. And if we're making that bond, bromine has to leave now. And what we get as a final product now with pyridine treating our alpha halogenation product is a double, a double bond there. And that is the whole mechanism all right so i'm gonna let you attempt b and c and let me know what you get if you need help let me know but with that we're gonna move on to 21.9 here and we're gonna do the synthesis problem all right we're gonna do the synthesis problem with the knowledge now that we have of alpha halogenation in acidic conditions we're gonna take advantage of this new knowledge to do this synthesis problem in a smart and informative way we are starting off with the secondary alcohol we want to convert it to this ketone that has a double bond at the alpha beta position all right fantastic let's notice what's different here of course our alcohol that we're starting off with is not preserved it's converted into a ketone and of course we didn't have a double bond here to start off with but we do in the end product so those are two big things that we need to do in our synthesis mechanism all right we need to convert the alcohol to a ketone hold up we know how to do this we covered this all right, we need a strong oxidizing agent to convert our secondary alcohol to a ketone. We're going to use our good old pal, sodium chromate, sulfuric acid, and water to accomplish this. We saw this a few chapters before in our review of how to convert alcohols into ketones. Fantastic. Now, we don't know how to go from this ketone to this final product where there's just randomly a double bond here. We can't do an elimination reaction when there's no halogen present. We know this from chapter 7 in Organic Chemistry 1. We did all our, for example, E2 elimination reactions, either when we had uh, alkyl halide or when we had some sort of alcohol group that can, or water group on our, on our, um, uh, uh, material that we can use as a leaving group to promote to proceed with an elimination reaction we don't have that yet but we just learned how to add a halogen to the alpha position of a ketone so we're going to take advantage of that we're going to use some strong acid and some br2 and what we're ultimately going to do is add a halogen 
to that alpha position of our ketone. Now we can do a simple elimination reaction and form a double bond at the alpha beta position. We're going to just go ahead and use pyridine since it's so good at doing that. And that is how you will do this synthesis problem here. All right, I'm going to let you attempt to be yourselves. Let me know what you got in the comments below. And if you need help, of course, reach out to me. All right, so we've covered alpha halogenation in acidic conditions. You can do alpha hal halogenation in basic conditions too, and this works pretty easily. The base abstracts a proton to form an enolate, which then functions as a nucleophile and undergoes alpha halogenation. The thing is with alpha halogenation in basic conditions is when there's more than one hydrogen present at that alpha position, it's difficult to get mono halogenation in basic conditions, right? Because once you've halogenated the alpha position with one halogen, say, for example, you've brominated that alpha position, mono bromination is kind of hard to get because once you've added that first bromine, if there's more hydrogens, you're going to continue to add bromines or halogens at that alpha position. And so with basic conditions, keep in mind that the halogenated product rapidly undergoes further halogenation. So you're just going to, if you have three or two hydrogens in your alpha position, you're going to be under basic conditions. There's no way you're only going to add one bromine. All right. You're probably going to be adding two or three, depending on how many hydrogens you have. The cool thing is though, there's a good consequence of that. All right. Once you've halogenated under basic conditions and you've added however many halogens you have, however many halogens you can, depending on how many hydrogens you had at that alpha position, you can take that product and then you can treat it with an acid. And what you can form is a carboxylic acid. This is going to be very, very useful in synthesis pathway questions. All right. So even though it seems like, oh, if I treat a ketone or aldehyde with, uh, with, with, with um, basic conditions to do alpha halogenation, I'm just going to get so many halogens added to the alpha position that's so unuseful. Well, it can be useful because you can take it one step further, treat that mono, that multi halogenated product with some acid, and then you can form a carboxylic acid. And that is pretty cool. And we're going to see that in, 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 in play here with these practice problems. All right, this practice problem, this first one says, predict the major product obtained when you treat the compound. Let's look at A with Br2 and sodium hydroxide. So you're treating this product, this, this starting material, I'm sorry. You're treating it with a, a base and halogen. All right, so you have the conditions for alpha halogenation through basic conditions. You have three hydrogens here. All three of these hydrogens are going to get halogenated. All right, and what you kind of get as a consequence of that, all right, is pretty much three bromines added to this position. All right, now wait, we're gonna, this is gonna be followed with a acid. All right, so that means we're gonna treat this, all right, one more step with an acid. Now what we get after this, and this is what we were talking about, is we get a carboxylic acid. Now, isn't that cool? All right, and it's the same thing with B, all right? Ooh, that's an ugly cyclopentane. All right, there we go. Same thing with B. All right, you treat this with sodium hydroxide and Br. What you're going to get, and let me erase this just to get it out of the way. What you're going to get is you have three hydrogens here. All of them are going to get brominated. That means you're going to get three bromines here again. But if we treat it, if we treat it with acid, we can convert this to a carboxylic acid and isn't that super cool all right now i'll let you do see we're going to move on to 21.13 and we're going to try to do the synthesis problem we're going to do the synthesis problem taking advantage of what we just learned about alpha halogenation all right in basic conditions and what we can do further with that all right so we're going to draw we're going to draw our starting material it's this secondary alcohol we want to convert it to this molecule that has this ester group right here. 
Fantastic. So note, let's note some differences. We have an alcohol group that we do not preserve in the final product. It turns into a ketone. All right. And specifically a ketone that has this group, this ethoxide group. It's actually now an ester. All right. So how are we going to get this to be an ester? Well, first we know how to take a secondary alcohol and convert it into a ketone. That's our first step. All right. So good old sodium chromate sulfuric acid and water will take this molecule and convert it to a ketone. Now we do not know how to go from a ketone straight to this, uh, to this ester. We don't know how to do that yet, but what we do know how to do is if we had, for example, a carboxylic acid here, let's say we know how to take this and convert it to an ester, but how do we go from a ketone to a carboxylic acid? Well, we just covered this sodium, a strong base like sodium, um, a hydroxide and Br2. This is going to add a bunch of bromines to this position. All right. It's going to add a bunch of bromines to this position. And then you can treat it with a strong acid. And guess what? You get this carboxylic acid. Now with a carboxylic acid, we know how to take a carboxylic acid, convert it to an ester. We covered this in the last chapter. All we have to do is treat this with a strong acid again and some ethanol and we get to add we get to replace this oh with this ethoxide group right here i'm gonna well actually i'm gonna let you again do b and c here on your own let me know what you get um but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into aldol reactions very quickly okay now we want to talk about a useful carbon carbon bond forming reaction called an aldol reaction of aldehydes and ketones actually aldol is an abbreviation of aldehyde. Those are the first three letters of aldehyde and the last two letters of alcohol. Isn't that cool? Now, when the enolate of an aldehyde or a ketone reacts at the alpha carbon with the carbonyl of another molecule under acidic or basic conditions, what you're gonna get is this beta hydroxy aldehyde or ketone. And this reaction is called an aldol reaction. Now, if we look at the mechanism, your first step, all right, starting off with this aldehyde, your first step is to deprotonate the alpha position. All right, we've stolen the hydrogen here. Now we form this enolate. This enolate is going to serve as a nucleophile, right? Because it has this negative charge right here. It's going to serve as a nucleophile. It's going to attack itself, right? Because there's a bunch of these aldehydes in solution. All right, it's going to attack itself. It's going to attack the uh, aldehyde at the electrophilic carbon, right? So we have this nucleophilic site on our enolate. We have this electrophilic carbon. All right. And our enolate is going to attack here. What's going to happen here is we're going to form a bond between these two. And this is what we're getting here now. Now, of course, if we make a bond between those two, we can't keep that double bond. We have to break that bond, right? Make a bond, break a bond. And now this oxygen has an extra lone pair, which is why it has that negative charge. Now, all we need is a proton transfer to remove that negative charge and get our final product. All right, now for aldehydes, all right, this end product is preferred, all right, and it's formed in equilibrium. But with ketones, usually the reverse product is preferred sometimes, and you'll, you'll have this reverse uh, uh, reaction happening, and the reverse of an aldol reaction is a retroaldol reaction. But you can kind of balance this out uh, uh, with temperature, all right? So additionally, when heated in acidic or basic conditions, the product of an aldol addition reaction, like we just saw here, the product of an aldol, uh, aldol addition reaction can undergo elimination to produce a double bond between the alpha and beta position. So if you take, all right, if you take, if you take your aldol addition product and then you heat it up in acidic or basic conditions, what you can do is actually form a double bond in the, between the alpha and beta position. All right. Practically, this transformation is readily achieved when an aldol addition is performed at elevated temperatures. All right. And what happens is this dehydration. 
all right this dehydration what that means is we're going to lose a water so this alcohol group that was here and this water at this this alcohol group at the beta position and this hydrogen in the alpha position they are they leave hence the dehydration to form this double bond there so one more time you can take the product you get of an aldol addition reaction and then dehydrate it all right through first a proton transfer where the alpha position is deprotonated to give this enolate and then you take this lone pair form a double bond there and kick out the alcohol all right the hydroxide is ejected and what you get is this aldol condensation product all right so to summarize when the reaction is performed at low temperatures the aldol addition product is obtained mind you in low yields but when the reaction is performed at elevated temperatures the aldol condensation product is obtained and it's obtained in very good yield because the equilibrium is driven by this formation of that double bond all right let's do a quick practice problem here we want to draw the condensation product when we treat these in aqueous sodium hydroxide and it's heated so basic conditions now before we can draw before we can draw i'm sorry the condensation product all right we have to draw the addition product the aldol addition product all right so what that means is first step we have to draw our aldol addition product and remember the first step there is to get this deprotonated this alpha position deprotonated all right and when it's deprotonated we form that enolate that is going to react it's going to react with itself all right so here's our enolate this is our nucleophilic site it's going to be attacking the electrophilic site all right of the same molecule what's going to happen here if it attacks all right two things we're going to form a bond between these two things all right and when we form a bond we gotta if we make a bond we gotta break this bond for the double bond so it's going to dump its electrons on the alcohol uh, on the oxygen all right so this is what we get we're going to redraw this all right we're going to redraw this molecule but now now it's formed at this alpha position a bond this bond right here to the alcohol, which has a lone pair now extra, so it has a negative charge. All right. Now, it formed this bond to this alcohol. What about the rest of this molecule? Well, of course, it's still attached to it. All right. Hold up. Let's draw this a bit pro more properly. All right. We formed this bond. Hold up, let me draw, get my blue back. All right, we formed this bond to this alcohol. Now, what about the rest of the molecule? Let me do that in red so you know that this is what we're talking about right here. What about the rest of the molecule? Well, these are the four carbon carbons that are still attached to this molecule. We want to go ahead and draw these. One, two, three, four. And of course, our hydrogen is still here. All right, so that's this product. This is our aldol addition product. One more thing, though, this alcohol, this oxygen does get protonated, right? Because we don't want that negative charge. So it gets protonated. This is our aldol addition product. Now it can be heated up and treated in basic conditions, all right, to give our condensation product. Now, how do we get this condensation product? We're going to dehydrate this molecule, essentially. All right, so the hydrogen at the alpha position and the alcohol in the beta position are gonna leave. We're gonna dehydrate this. And so instead, we form a double bond here between the alpha and beta position. So what does our molecule look as a consequence of that? Well, what our molecule looks like as a consequence of that is there's a double bond here. And that is our condensation product. I'm gonna let you attempt B and C, all right? Let me know what you get. All right, what we're going to move on to is our last topic for this session, and that's cross-aldol reaction. Now, the interesting thing to keep in mind is that we can also have cross-aldol reactions. And what this means is that we can have aldol reactions that occur between different partners. And as an example, if you look at this molecule A and this molecule B, these two molecules can react in a number of ways that's going to result in mixed aldol products. 
All right, A can react with A, all right, to give a product. A can react with B, where A becomes the enolate and attacks B. All right, B can react with itself, B, to form a aldol product as well. And then B can react with A, where B is deprotonated to form the enolate and then attack A. All right, so those are four products we can form here. All right, there's four products we can form here. All right, and we can look at them in close details. All right, we can deprotonate A, all right, to form an enolate. And here's, the and here's the nucleophilic site that's going to attack the electrophilic site of B. All right, we form this bond between the two right here. And of course, we have to break that bond, which is why we get an oxygen that then gets protonated at the end. And what we get is this end product. Of course, this methyl is right here. All right, and this is the product we get for that. Now, A can react with itself as well. All right, so it can attack the electrophilic site here and it can form a bond between the two and since the this double bond is broken and then protonated this is why we get that alcohol here and that's this product here now we can do b plus a where b gets deprotonated all right and is the nucleophile and attacks a and what we get is a bond between these two right here this bond breaks and it gets protonated to form an alcohol that's this product right here and of course b can react with itself in the same way to give this product. So if you were given this as a free response problem, all right, you're given two molecules told to draw all the aldol addition products. Remember to keep in mind that you're gonna get mixed products, all right? And you have to make sure you draw all of them like we did. Now, this is an example done in your problem, but this chart I, I got from Google, I think it's originally from Clutch Prep and it's fantastic, all right? Now what we wanna do is just do a few practice problems here really quickly, all right? Just a few, and then we're going to end the session for today. All right, next time we're going to be covering uh, placing condensation. All right, so 20.19, identify reagents that can be used to, produ to produce the following aldol reactions. Okay, so this is a great example problem. This is our aldol addition product already. All right, this is the product. We're trying to figure out what two molecules reacted to give this product. Easy. This is how we'll do it. We're gonna look at the ketone, all right? We're gonna look at this carbonyl. We're gonna identify the alpha position. We're gonna identify the beta position, all right? We know in our aldol addition uh, 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 process, all right, that it's at the beta position that we're gonna be form. We're gonna be uh, attack. We're gonna be taking. I'm sorry. For example, our starting ketone, deprotonating it to form an enolate, and then it'll be attacking a different carbonyl site. And so what we can do to figure out what these two products are is divide between the alpha and beta position. All right, so we've created this divide on how to, on the, between the alpha and beta position. This is how we want to work backwards, okay? Then we're going to look at what we get at this half, all right, including the alpha position. This, all right, This is one of the molecules that we will be reacting in our aldol addition reaction to ultimately get this. It's this molecule that's going to get deprotonated at this alpha position here. All right, when it gets deprotonated, then it's going to have a negative charge and it's going to want to attack an electrophilic carbon site. All right, of this other molecule, we're going to take this. All right, this alcohol. This alcohol was once also a carbonyl now this doesn't have any additional substituents on it so what it really was was just an aldehyde all right and it's these two molecules that reacted together to form this product we simply broke it at the alpha beta position and worked backwards that way now this this starting material got deprotonated at the alpha position to form an enolate this nucleophilic site is going to attack this electrophilic carbon all right, if we make a bond between the two, we're going to break a bond. All right, and this is how we ultimately get this product. I want you to attempt these problems. All right, I'll give you hints, right? Alpha, beta position. We're simply breaking between the two and drawing our two molecules that will be reacting together through an aldol addition reaction. With that being said, that is all I have for you today. All right, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. All right, if you want to see more practice problems in a separate problem set, let me know. I am more than happy to do that. Other than that, 
Good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful day.